All right, good evening, everybody. So tonight, I want to walk you through setting up your solar assistant with your Victron Smart Shunt to track your battery capacity. So let's get started. So if you've seen any of my previous videos regarding solar resistant, uh, I'm currently using my Victron Smart Shunt to track my battery capacity because from what I have seen, the monitoring of the Smart Shunt seems to be the most accurate way that I can track my multiple battery bank state of charge. And I've actually come across that discussion multiple times across the forums where uh, people say it just really seems to uh, be the most accurate in tracking battery capacity overall. So what I've done is I actually went back through and reset my solar assistant back to using my JK BMS values. So in a second we'll jump into solar assistant and I'll show you that. And I have disconnected my my cabling for my smart shunt to my solar assistant so I can show you everything that needs to be done. And really, it is extremely simple. So let's jump on over to Solar Assistant real quick and we'll show you uh, what everything looks like before we set up the smart shunt and then I'll show you how we're gonna wire everything up to get it to show up in Solar Assistant. All right, so I've got Solar Assistant up and I've got my smart shunt information shown next to it. So you can see there's already a discrepancy. Uh, the BMS is show 98% and the smart shunt is showing 91%. So I still have at least 50 amp hours that I can push into these batteries where the BMS is thinking, you know, hey, you don't have a whole lot of uh, capacity left to push into it. From my understanding, and I could be wrong about this, but this is just what I've noticed. When you have multiple battery banks connected into solar assistant and those batteries or BMSs track the state of charge for the batteries. Solar Assistant is going to basically just take the average of all of the connected battery banks and then display that as the state of charge. And the more banks you end up adding, the more server rack batteries or you know DIY batteries you end up adding and connecting into Solar Assistant, your state of charge could get significantly further and further off. You're relying on all these individual BMSs to keep track of the capacity that's gone in and out for themselves, but nothing is, is the system as a whole. And that's where the smart shunt comes in because it's gonna track everything that goes through it, whether it comes in or goes out. And it's gonna give you the most accurate calculation that I have seen so far. We'll jump over to the settings here Scroll down to the inverter section, battery section, you can see I have battery type is USB JK BMS and I have two connected USB ports. We're gonna look over here. So you can see here is my Raspberry Pi running solar assistant. I have this little splitter just so that I can connect my two BMSs to the Raspberry Pi. And then my smart shunt is right here. It is the very first point of connection coming off of my battery disconnects. So what we need in order to connect the Raspberry Pi and the Smart Shunt is we need a VE Direct cable. And I know it's going to be upside down, but it's going to plug in right here. Now, you can you can buy the VE Direct cable from Amazon for I think 30 bucks. Or I ended up seeing on the off-grid garage where Andy gave the cheaper cables to buy, the cheaper parts to buy, and the pinouts to be able to make your own cable for half the cost. So I wanna say I spent $15 making my own VE Direct cable to go from the smart shunt over to the USB on the Raspberry Pi. And here's what my own cable looked like. So you've got your USB connection on one end. It did require a little bit of soldering, but you know, to save 15 bucks, 
course I'll, make, I'll do some soldering. So you've got your USB connection on the one side, and I believe this is a JST connector um, on the other side. And what I'll do is I'll actually link to Andy's video where he goes through and does the pinouts and everything. Um, I actually made three of these. One for my smart shunt and one for each of my solar charge controllers. And, and they work great. And like I said, you save about 15 bucks. So this was a USB to TTL cable. And then you yeah, a JST connection over here. I think seven bucks a piece. I think I got a bag of 20 of these. Seven bucks for the USB cable. A few minutes of soldering, some heat shrink, and I'm done. And I've got a successful cable. So if we come over here, like I said, we've got our VE Direct cable. I'm gonna try and do this one-handed. Let's see how it works. So you'll take your U your VE Direct cable, plug it in over there. And that's all you have to do for connections. Obviously, I'll clean it up later, but VE Direct to USB. So we're gonna jump back over to Solar Resistant real quick. And in order to make changes to any of these dropdowns for inverter and battery, you have to hit Disconnect. And then under Battery, we're gonna change it all the way down to the second one from the bottom, USB VE Direct. And then you need to figure out which cable is actually the one that you want to connect to. And in this case, I believe it is USB one serial controller. So then we hit save and connect. And you see everything shows connected. Jumping back over to the dashboard and now you can see we have 91% battery in solar assistant and 91% showing on the smart shunt. Typically you're going to see a percent charge or discharge underneath the battery percentage for how much is going to either charge or discharge per hour based on the incoming or outgoing power in your environment. And I have noticed with Solar Assistant and the Smart Shunt, it does work, but for some reason it just takes a little while to calibrate the Smart Shunt information, I guess. So it might be a couple of hours and that's gonna happen anytime you disconnect the inverter and battery connections. But after a few hours, you'll notice that all of a sudden it just starts showing up again. And I'll show you an example here on the screen of uh, percent discharged, and then here's a percent charging uh, from earlier in the day today. So it will come back, it will show up. It just takes a couple of hours to show up. So it's, it's really a simple setup. You can spend the 30 bucks and buy your own VE Direct cable, or you can spend 15 or so and make your own. I like to save money. I like the DIY. It was kind of a no-brainer for me. But it's so simple. I mean, you plug one end into your smart shunt, one end into the Raspberry Pi, go into your configuration for Solar Assistant, change your battery type, select your port, save connect boom you're done and it for me it, it's the most accurate calculation so i hope that helps uh, as always if you've got questions comments you know you can you can leave them down in the comments i will try and leave links to the different pieces the video from andy and everything down in the description below to make it easy for you guys to see so you can go ahead and connect your smart shunt up to solar resistant. And with that, I'm gonna let y'all go. Y'all stay safe, stay warm. I guess I have to stop saying stay warm. It's starting to warm up. Y'all stay safe, then we'll catch up with you later.